guys, welcome to the 2023 Legends of the Autobahn and I am joined here by Matt Russell. Yeah. If the name sounds familiar, it's because Matt used to be a BMW guy. That's right. He's still somewhat of a BMW guy. A little bit. A little bit of a tie there. Former Embran manager, true, former yeah. spokesperson. We've known each other for a very long time. We did an amazing 1M trip together, so thank yeah. you for that. Gosh. That's the background. And right now, Alpina representative for yeah, North so America. That's right. And this Alpina is why we're here today. Tell me why we're we here today. So I've been with Alpina four years now. It's okay. amazing how fast it gets by. We were talking about that earlier. So this is the first time that Alpina has formally sponsored the Legends of the Autobahn, the, the West event. Yep. And uh, so we, we've um, we've been engaging more and more the Alpina Classic side of things. That's a that's a, a business that we develop for on the side for parts and technical support and restoration for the older cars. Alpina will be 60 years old in 2025. So when you think about that, that's six decades of product history that we have out there floating around on the the different continents of the world. More of it has found its way to the United States than ever before with the 25 years rule and things like this. So, so it's gotten big enough here that we could we could have a formal organized gathering of, of, of owners of classic cars, classic Alpina models here at Legends. So what do we have here? So maybe we go one by one and look we at could. some new one ones one, and older two. ones. Yeah. Two by two, why sure. not? So we get we, the horseshoe kind of arranged here. Okay, the right here, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And, and, so you um, want to start with this one? Yeah, so we, we of course, you know, bookending it, we have the new cars, the XB7 and the Alpina B8. But if you jump right to the Golf Yellow E9 here, this is not a CSL, but a lot of people think it is. Okay. It's an Alpina B2S. So it's closely related to the CSL. And a lot of people know that Alpina was a partner on the BMW CSL way back in the early 1970s. This is kind of the product of, of some of that very early work. Mm -hmm. um, so. Um, and of course, with the Golf Yellow, you just you have to stop and take yeah. a look and take a read of the windshield plate and just see Stunning. what it is. But Stunning. absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. There's no B pillar. It's a timeless design. Yeah. Truly beautiful. Uh, then we move to this Lapis okay. Blue E21 3 Series. And now this car is special to me just because uh, an E21 3 Series was my first car back when I was a teenager. Really? Okay. Yeah, it was it was old and, and I cleaned it up and fixed it up and Very drove cool. it for a couple of years. Yeah. And yeah, so I love to see. This car actually has its own website where you can follow its restoration, which is pretty cool. Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah so. Um, it's so always it's nice to see at. those. Yeah. Gotcha. And the E21s were one of the last, or it's the first generation 3 Series, but one of the last BMWs built before the days of Cosmoline and other corrosion protection. Mm -hmm. So there are fewer survivors of E21s than there are of later generation 3 Series, like an E30 or 36. I mean, it looks pristine, so, honestly. I yeah. mean, if you look at the car, it's just... Yeah. It's nice. Immaculate. Someone's baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You can tell the owner really takes care of this well, one. That's right. So that's a late 70s car okay. to early 80s. In the 70s, Alpina was working on the Shark, right? So after the E9 uh, um, CS yep. and, and CSL type cars, they got into the E24 6 Series. We've got two great examples of the E24 yep. 6 Series here. And there's not much you can say about them besides, wow, you just have to look. Yep. They were called uh, B7s and, and turbo, B7 turbos and B7, they had many variants of the mm -hmm. car. Um, some with electronic boost controllers and, and some with, uh, you know, different variants, different engines, things like that. You have to really pick up the book and read it. But what's interesting is they're built in small numbers. So maybe 30 cars here, 30 cars there. Mm -hmm. So batch production, each one built for a customer. That's why each one looks a little bit different in the details. Very interesting. 20,000 yeah. miles only on it too. Amazing. We have some great original Brand examples. New, we can I mean. go even lower than that in a few Is minutes. it really? Yeah? Lower yeah. than that? Wow. Well, down, the, down the line, we can get fine okay. one with even fewer miles on it. Yeah, gotcha. we, we can do it. And cool. of course, some of them have very high miles, but if they're perfectly restored, it really makes no difference at all. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So we have another shark here. So these two I consider to be a bit of a pair. Okay, okay gotcha. Yeah. Which yeah. one would you take out of the two? Oh, I don't know. Choice? I was I had a great talk with, with yeah. Paul who owns this car earlier today when yeah. he talked about how underrated it seems to be. Yeah. I think the output on it on low boost is 330 horsepower, wow. but he's got a dyno sheet showing right. it somewhere in the neighborhood of 356. Uh, he said it's just yeah, it's, it's just pretty fun, it's wild then. and crazy, it's especially fun, for yeah. the 1970s. But yeah. you gotta love the color on this one though. Oh I love the green. I, mean, I love that the color green. Is just... And we still sell it. More and more green cars. Alpina is helping to bring it back. I know, right? Alpina Green famous. <laughs> That's right. All right, yeah. next one, what do you have? So we have a couple of E28 5 Series cars, okay. which have gone, have really become, and they're also called B7s in, in, in most cases, and uh, yeah, they've just become really popular. The E28 as a whole for BMW has become a wild collectible, sure. really for the last, what would you say, five years, yeah, five to eight years? I mean, I mean it's been almost- COVID accelerated that yes, even yes. more, honestly. Yeah. And for it's been sure. rediscovered by a whole new generation of, yeah. uh, of people. But um, for sure. yeah, the Alpina models, of course, are gonna be among the most rare of any f old 5 Series that you can find, whether it's an E28 or an E34, even E39s, they're very unusual to see. So to have a couple of them here, it's as special as having the two 6 Series here as well. For sure. Yeah. Very interesting. Then we have a real opportunity. If you go just past the 5 Series, you'll see we have 
the E36 Alpina models. Okay. Now, this was not possible only a few years ago, but now with the 25 years exclusion um, that, w that makes these cars legal for the U.S., they can be sold and Im imported and, and uh, owned in the U.S. now for the first time. So we have four E36 Alpina models here, including two touring wagons, which is pretty awesome. So it's pretty awesome because I yeah. don't think I've seen that many here at Legends of the Autobahn. No, you see here no. one and there. But, really, it's exactly. Yeah. To have four all lined up together is special for us. Yeah. I mean, this, is, this is the one that I wanted to tell you about, Brandon's car. I believe it's only, yeah, like 1,400 kilometers on the car wow. from new. Yeah, it's, wow. it's here on the sticker. Let me see if I can I see mean, this it. Is, Brand new. 1,200 kilometers 1, from new. Kilometers. So a true time capsule car. Miles, yeah. miles. This wow. one is the only one here I would feel truly guilty about driving. To driving. <laughs> Although no. I'd still do it. You still do don't it, eh? oh, oh, yeah. I don't know. Yes, you would. It's like yeah. a garage queen, you know? I don't it know. It is, but it's absolutely beautiful. It's beautiful. It's like looking back in time when you see yeah. the car. Yeah. Technoviolet? Uh, I'd have to double check, yeah. Maybe Technoviolet or a... Madeira Black. Wow. Yeah. Never so I've seen this color before. So low mileage, rare wow. car, rare very, color. Very, very cool. I mean, yeah. the graphics on it too, they're awesome because it's really well. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful. And we mentioned that we have two E36 Tourings here. Okay. One of them is really, really it. special. They're, they're all special and rare, but this one, this is the one with the V8. This is the one that they said was impossible to build. So it's an Alpina V8 okay. uh, based on the E36 with a 4.6 liter V8 engine in it based on the M60 uh, V8 from BMW. So, um, huge engine, small lightweight car, steering rack steering. Again, it, it makes a very telepathic driving experience and you have the balance of a Touring, which with the backpack on the back, you have a little bit of extra weight in the rear. You have a beautifully balanced car statically and that yeah. leads to good dynamic balance as well. So it's a true driver's car. This one again, perfectly maintained uh, by its owner here, out here yeah. in California. And that's Robert Tran's car and it's absolutely uh, a joy to drive. Yeah. And I'm assuming there are not that many in the world, right? Oh, no, I mean, they only made a, they made a small number of these. Small yeah, number, I forget yeah. the exact number, but not yeah. many. Absolutely beautiful, this one, too. Let's see if they saw it. You can see the engine bay. I mean, it's spotless. Nicely restored. Only 27 as Tourings. Okay, wow. <laughs> and just not a handful much. over 200 built all together. Yeah. Wow. So a rare car, very special. Very, very interesting one. Yeah. If I had to pick one of the entire lineup, I'd probably want to spend the most time driving this one. This one, yeah? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's got to feel different than anything else to drive it, honestly, right? I mean, it has to. I mean, yes. that massive engine out there, smaller chassis, you know. I it's going to have similar performance to, say, an E39 M5. Really? But with the steering rack steering yeah. and the overall packaging of a 3 Series. Yeah. So it's going to be, like you said, unique yeah. to drive. So talk about real steering, right? I mean, oh, yeah. that's what we're talking about there. Well, that's right. Very uh, direct. Yeah, exactly. And the E36 was famous for its good steering anyway, yeah, for, if for you sure. remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 1997, car and driver called it the best handling car at any price. Yeah. Yeah. So that's... Uh, old times. That's true, yeah. <laughs> we old men, we can remember that. Exactly. Yeah. So we have another one. This was a Japanese market okay. uh, E36 Touring. Okay. And this was a, a different, it was a, it's an automatic, it's a smaller engine. Okay. But still, it has a full Alpina treatment. Mm -hmm. It's just not a wild animal the way that the V8 would be. Yeah, I mean, it's a B6 2.8. Right. So they called yeah. it a B6 because it was a six-cylinder, a smaller six-cylinder. And this is definitely the Alpina Green, right? Yeah, I believe that's correct. Gotcha. And speaking of colors, we have the Alpina Blue now. Oh yeah, so, so we can actually, yeah, we can show that. Yeah, the, the B8 Can I tell here. you something about this car? Please. It is by far one of the best looking cars in the entire lineup today, uh, not just for Alpina, for uh, the BMW too. Well, that's high like, praise. I mean, honestly, I feel like they've, they've just nailed the design and then once you have the Alpina touches on it, it's just perfect. Well, we go with the we have the 20 spoke wheels. It's yeah. kind of a classic thing if you go all the way back around to the beginning. 20 yeah. spokes, but in this case, 21 inches. On the XB7, we go up to 23 inches. Then we have to make them fit. We have to add a little bit of plastic to actually stick out from the fenders to properly Plating, cover yeah. the wheels front sure. and back. We do our own aerodynamic treatment. Now, the top speed on the car is 201 miles per hour. We go quite a bit faster than than you can go in an, yeah. an I don't want to say a regular BMW, yeah. but in other BMW models. Mm -hmm. um, but we test for that. We go 1,000 kilometers at top speed. Okay. We have to stop every 20 minutes or so for fuel and to inspect the tires, but we make sure that the cars will run for a full thousand kilometers at their very top speed. So in this case, 201 miles per hour. Nope. We have to bolt everything on a little bit tighter and heavier hardware to do so. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, so we make sure that we have zero lift all the way to the top speed of the car. We don't really go for downforce because that's not necessary for sure. our customers, but we make sure we have no lift. So uh, the car should not get light or should not handle more poorly mm -hmm. the faster you go. I mean, even the front fascia, the front bumper too, it's so nicely done. It's not overly done. You know, it's still sporty enough, but classy right. at the same time. And yeah. that's kind of what I appreciate about the Alpina BA Grand Coupe, honestly. Just that classy design overall. It's not in your face yet alone. It shows that it's a right. 
you know, it's got massive power. You it's know, restrained, delivered. but all of yeah. the development is there. And I find that this is a really good gas station car. Someone always wants to talk about this car yeah. at the gas station. So you know that it's distinct enough that people who are real car people, they know what they're looking at. And then they want to come and ask questions about it. It's a pleasure. Yeah. It's a really good conversation starter that way. What color options do you offer in the U.S. for this one? Which colors? Uh, yeah. You can do any of the BMW colors, any of the okay. individual colors. You can. This car is based on the M850i, so okay. you can do the M colors, gotcha. including the upholstery. And then we offer Alpina Blue and Alpina Green as well. So you have to buy the Alpina car to yeah. get the Alpina color. Well, why would you do anything else other than the, than the Alpina colors, honestly, right? I mean, I feel like the Alpina Blue or Alpina Green is just made for this car. Yeah, I love that people have the choice, but I'm an Alpina Green person. Yeah, me too. That's, that's what, that is, I could drive that for the rest of my life. The Alpina Excellent. Green for me is the best. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. All right, so you said out of all of them, you would pick the V8? I probably would want to drive the B8 Touring the most. Gotcha. If I could just, just grab the keys and run away in one of them. I've been lucky enough to drive a, a number of these, yeah. but that's the one I would want to spend the most time with today. And out of the new ones, which one is more popular in the US, the XB7 or the B8? So the XB7 is filling a role for Alpina we've never done before by providing a family transportation car. We can seat up to seven people in the XB7. Mm -hmm. That's a market unto itself, as you know. So to do our first full-size, ultra-high performance SUV. Mm -hmm. um, we've done smaller XD3 and XD4 models based yeah. on the X3 and X4, but the XB7 is sold out through the end of 2024. So it has been a very strong, it's had a good reception here in yeah. North America. Uh, but the B8 has been very strong as well um, because we don't build a B7 anymore, the full-size mm -hmm. sedan, but with the Grand Coupe, we can, we can still serve that customer and it's a wildly sporty package. Okay. Um, it really is. And it's also a, I like to describe it as kind of an analog driving experience in, in today's world of automation and, and yeah. uh, electrification and infotainment. We have a uh, strong infotainment system. 7, yeah. Right, we yeah. have, exactly. Physical buttons, switches. We, <laughs> very tactile. Thank you, yes, it's yes. really good, so keep it that way. <laughs> the secondary controls are yeah. still there for you. Exactly. Yes, no, it's, um, it's a wonderful experience for people who like the way that it's been done for quite some years. Yeah. Yes, so we, awesome. we stay on that track. Even in the XB7, we retain the larger uh, crystal shifter yeah. for, the, uh, for the gear selector. Yeah, so we, we like some like of those, little toggle. Yeah, yeah, we like the large interface yeah. pieces. That's why we do our own steering wheel, using yeah. our own upholstery and our own stitching. Sure. Same thing. All right, so I'm gonna throw you a curveball to end this video. A lot of people always ask the question, why isn't there an Alpina B3, D3, B5, especially in the <laughs> US? In the US. Well, Something you can share on that, because people, <laughs> especially the B5, that, I mean, it used to be that B3, people wanted that, but now it's more like the B5. Why yeah. don't you get into B5? Well, you know that we just announced the B5 GT in yes. the past months, and the car sold out almost immediately. Uh, and it's for other markets as well. I know. So we, we do know that the demand is there. Um, Homologations I have to say, or? You know, our partnership with BMW now for selling in North America is 20 years old this year. It began with the Alpina Roadster V8 back in 2003. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of experience now working with BMW on, on which cars to bring we make a lot of proposals, but in the end, BMW has to decide which models they want to import mm -hmm. and sell through their portfolio in North America. Okay. So in the end, it's their decision. Gotcha. But, so um, really final question, what's next for Alpina? So 2026 mm -hmm. transition year basically That's right. to BMW, but Al Alpina as a brand, as I know, it's not that, right? Right, no. So what's next for the Alpina brand as we know it today? Yeah, so I, I mean, I think, so we have, we will be selling the B8 and the XB7 in North America for the next two and a half years. So that's business as usual. We are building our Alpina classic business, as you see here today, by mm -hmm. trying to support events and, and owners of cars like this more. Um, and we will retain the Alpina Classic um, wordmark and, and, and uh, that business after we go through 2026. Uh, and then BMW, of course, will do as it, uh, you know, however it sees fit with the Alpina Automobiles brand um, in the future. So I think there's a very bright future for Alpina. It will change in 2026. It'll be new and different, but, but it is a very bright future. And the wine business doesn't go to Munich, stays in Buckler, right? That's right. Okay. Right. So, so that's the, a good choice. <laughs> the Bovisiva family will keep the Alpina wines business, and, and that's a, they're the for people who don't know, they're the largest wine distributor in uh, in Germany, as a matter of fact, for wines from all over the world, from Europe and America. And, uh, yes, they will keep the wines business in Buchloe, Germany, about about an hour west of uh, of Munich. Yes. And uh, we invite anyone to come and stop by and see our showroom and meet some people at Alpina if you ever have the chance uh, to go touring in Germany. You should stop by. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Matt. This was a really nice overview. Love the cars here. Thank Thanks you once again. Me. Thanks for coming. Guys, we'll see you in the next one.